here's the idea, everyone. First of all, when you first turn on your TI, you should, that's the landing page of the TI Inspire. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to insist on something that you get. I really want you to get in the habit of not using documents. So in other words, think of this as two columns. The first is scratch pad. The second is documents. Documents you'll use, or I should say we'll use, when we do statistics. For practically everything else, you're going to be using scratch pad, in particular for functions. So it doesn't really matter if you clack, clack, click on A or B, and here's why. If I click on calculate, the first thing I want to draw your attention towards is that in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you can hover between a calculator and the graph. And it's rather important to understand that those two things are completely connected. So anything I define on my graph here, I'll be able to find here. Now, on the questions I gave you, we're asked to consider that function f of x, which equals to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x minus 5. So the first thing I'm going to do here is plot it. So that's going to be 2x to the power of 3 minus 3x squared minus, whoops, get that away from there, minus 12x minus 5. And I click on Enter. Now, when you first look at that, that's not particularly practical to work with. So one of the first things we need to do here, and as such, I could say that what we've just done here is question one, plot the curve on the XY grid. But the second question I'm asking you here is adjust window settings for us to have a clear view on the curve over the domain for X between negative three and five. Now, before even doing that, I by default have the label of my function that appears when I plot the graph. I do this to make sure that I entered the, the equation properly. Okay, so I always check that I did 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x minus 5. That's what's on my worksheet, so I'm happy with that. Once I've checked, though, I get rid of that. That just bugs me. It's in my way. So I literally click on it, and then I click on delete. Now, the domain we're given here are all x values between negative 3 and 5. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and click on menu. And in fact, everything we're going to be doing pretty much will click on menu. But I click on menu, and I can see the fourth option here is window slash zoom. Okay. I then select the very first option, window settings. And when you first see this, it may be a little bit confusing. This x min refers to the minimum x value on your screen. The x max you see here refers to the maximum x value on your screen. Y min is the minimum y value on your screen. And of course, y max is the maximum y value on your screen. As far as the x scale and y scales are concerned, leave them as auto. Okay, It, it means it's just going to automatically adjust in order to make the curve look as good as possible and for things to fit properly. Leave it that way. Of course, if you're curious, mess around. But for by default, I would leave them. So remember, we're told that the domain is all values of x between negative 3 and 5. So for my x min, I'll go ahead and type negative 3. For my x max, I'll type 5. Yeah? I'm not going to touch the y values just yet. I will, though, in a second. But for the moment, I'm just entering the domain that was given, and I click on OK. Already I can see that now the space on the screen is being better used, I suppose. But I mean, I'm not happy with what I see there. I can see that I'm missing a large portion of the graph down here, right? You can see that clearly it's going, something's happening at the bottom there, and I need to see that. Now, in this particular worksheet, we're not given any indication as to which y values we should consider. When that happens, or if that happens, don't waste time. Go ahead and look at large values of y. And here's what I mean. If I look at my screen here, I can see that the maximum y value on this screen is 6.65, roughly. Minimum is negative 6.65. So I want to go way further down. Don't know how much yet. That doesn't matter. But I do know I want to go a lot further down. So I just go ahead and take the initiative of going, OK, I'll click on Menu again, Window slash Zoom again, Window Settings again. And this time, I'm going to change my y values. My x values are fine now. Don't touch those. My minimum y value, I'll go ahead and say negative 50. For my max y value, I'll say 10. I click on OK. That's already looking much better now. 
So I'm quite happy with that, but I just looking at it, I, I still have a lot of wasted space down here. Now, let me insist, if you're in a test or an exam, you could stop there. You've got everything you need on the screen. But for the sake of showing you things clearly right now, I mean, just looking at this, I'd say that's roughly, I don't know, I reckon if I go to negative 30, it should be enough. I don't need to go all the way down to negative 50. So I'll go there one last time. I click on menu, window slash zoom, window settings, and I'll change my minimum Y value to negative 30. Click on that, and I click on OK. And that's looking pretty good to me. So at present, we've answered question two. We've adjusted the window settings for us to have a clear view on the curve over the domain X between negative three and five. Question three, or task three on that worksheet, you should see it says evaluate F of three. Okay? Now, what that means is I want you to technically calculate F of three. And let me insist on a calculator test or your paper four at IGCSE, do not calculate that by hand. Here, with your calculator, like I said earlier on, the calculate section and the graph are completely connected. The curve we just entered, you can see at the top here, when I hover over it, it says graph F1. That's because it's function one. If I go over to my calculator, and I do so by hovering over, click on the calculator icon, I can now find that F1 function. It's stored. I can find it by clicking on the VAR button, which is directly above 9. If I click on that, I'll now see any function that was previously stored by the calculator. Of course, there's only one graph on that curve, F1. So I click on F1. Now, if I need to calculate F of 3, I just enter 3 in here, and I, click, I exit that, and I click on Enter. Done. It's negative 14. That's quite an important thing to know. You'll save yourselves time and potentially trouble. You don't have to do any algebra, any calculations. On your calculator paper, you are at right to use this calculator all the way to evaluate f at any value of x. That's how you would do it. Okay? So f of 3 there would be equal to negative 14. Now, for the next question, we're told, find the function's zeros. And I added here, in parentheses, the x-intercepts. Okay? A function's zeros are technically the values of x at which the function equals to zero. And we can find that graphically. Let me insist, though, and in fact, you'll see when I share this with you, what I'm writing on my iPad screen. Um, let me insist, though, those are the solutions, solutions, to f of x equals to 0. So a function zeros are where the values of x at which the curve crosses the x-axis. Okay. Now to do that, again, I've got my graph on the calculator screen. And to find them, I go ahead and click on Menu, followed by the sixth option, Analyze Graph. And trust me when I say that the vast majority of things you're going to be doing with this calculator on the graph follows that same path. So I'll say it again. Menu, followed by the sixth option, Analyze Graph. The first option you have there is the zero. That's referring to the function's zero, where it crosses the x-axis. If I click on zero, I have this thing that appears. And if you've never used this before, that can be a bit off-putting. I'm sure you can see in the lower uh, left-hand corner there of the calculator screen that it's asking for a lower bound and a question mark at the end. In mathematical terms, that just means go to the left-hand side of the value that you're after. Now, if I look at this, the graph I have here over this domain, how many times does it cross the x-axis? Three times. Yeah, I've got one here. That's one x-intercept. There's another. And there's another. I need to find all three of those. So I'll go from left to right. I'll start with this one. To find it, for the lower bound, I go anywhere to the left of that. Anywhere. doesn't matter where. I could go here, 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 here. doesn't matter, provided it's to the left of this point. So I'll go here, and once I'm there, I click. I've clicked. Now, notice it's asking me for an upper bound. So all I have to do there is go to the right of the point that I'm after. So I hover over. Done. I'm now to the right-hand side of that zero. You can see it picks up on it, and I click. So that first zero, oops, that first zero has coordinates. 
So let's see, I'll write negative 1.45, 0. Okay? Now, technically, if you had to solve the equation f of x equals to 0, one of the solutions would therefore be x equals to negative 1.45. We have two other solutions we have to find though, so I follow that same path again. I click on menu, followed by analyze graph, followed by zero, and I look for the second one. I go to the left of that point, I click, I hover over to the right of that point, and I click. And I can see here it's got a little label. The second one is negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, zero. So the equation f of x equals to 0 has a second solution, negative 0 0.5. Finally, for the last one, I follow the same steps again. That's I'm looking for this one over here. Menu, analyze graph, 0 again. Lower bound means go to the left, click, go to the right, click. I now have the third solution to that equation, which would be 3.45. And, of course, I could also state the third x-intercept, which is 3.450. Done. Okay? That's this question four answered. We're nearly there. Question five, we have to find the coordinates of any local maximum and minimum points on the curve. Now, for that, first of all, let's clarify, if it's not already clear, what is meant by a local maximum and a local minimum. This type of curve is a cubic function, which we've seen before. We've seen its parent function, and we've just been working with cubics, finding unknown coefficients. Technically, this graph doesn't have a maximum point, nor does it have a minimum point. It shoots up towards positive infinity, and it shoots down to negative infinity as well. So when we speak of a local maximum, we're referring to a maximum point like the one I'm hovering over right now. In this point's neighborhood, or immediate surroundings, it's definitely the highest point. Similarly, this point down here would be what we call a local minimum, okay? I'm going to find both of those. To find them, luckily for us, this calculator has that function built in as well. All I have to do is click on Menu, Analyze Graph again. I'll start with the maximum, and I click on Maximum. Maximum point is roughly here, yeah? It's asking me for a lower bound again, so I go anywhere to the left of that. I click. It's now asking me for an upper bound, so I go anywhere to the right of that, and I click. And I have the maximum point right here. Right? So the maximum point, now I can now write it, the maximum has coordinates negative 1, 2. For the minimum point, I do the same. Menu, analyze graph, but now I click on minimum. The minimum is somewhere around here, so I go to the left of that point, I click. I go to the right of that point, and I click. And I now have the minimum point, which has coordinates to negative 25. Last but not least, we have to solve f of x, which equals to negative 10. Now, careful, that's a little less obvious. To solve that, we're going to actually add a second graph to our curve. Or to our x, y grid, I should say. And here's the whole idea. I'm actually going to add y equals to negative 10 as a second function on my x, y grid. Let me get rid of all these labels for a second. If I get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of them all. There we go, and there we go. Okay. I need to solve f of x equals to negative 10. So in other words, I need to add a graph to this, and I'll add the function f of x equals to negative 10. To do that, I click on Menu, Graph Entry slash Edit. And I add another function. And I now enter negative 10. I click on Enter. That's a horizontal line. That's the line y equals to negative 10. And the solutions to f of x equals to negative 10 will be the x-coordinates of any points of intersection between this line and that curve. To find them, I click on Menu, Analyze Graph again, and the fourth option, intersection. So I click on that. It always works the same way, lower bound, upper bound. So for this point of intersection, I go to the left, I click. It now asks me for an upper bound, I go to the right of it, I click. That's the first point of intersection. So the first solution to this equation would in fact be x equals to negative 2.04. 
The second solution I'll find by finding the x coordinate of the second point. Click on menu, analyze graph again, the intersection. And so I go to the left, I click, I go to the right, I click. That's the second point. And so I write that as well on my iPad screen. I'll have 0 0.389 is a second solution. I can see there's one more solution over here. I do the same again, menu, analyze graph, the intersection. I go to the left of that point, I click, and I go to the right of that point, and I click. I now have the third solution, 3.15. Those are all the solutions to f of x equals to negative 10. Okay? Now, all of that's sort of the rundown of the essentials you need to know. We're going to be looking at other things, particularly for rational functions, finding asymptotes and all the rest, but we're going to get to that. As a first step, those are the key things you have to know for now.